So, hello everyone. I think we shall just wait another 30 seconds or a minute or so just to make sure that people have the time to log into the meeting. So, have a little bit of patience and we will begin shortly. So it looks like uh, people are still dropping in, but I'm thinking we only have an hour, so I we will begin now. Uh, hello, everybody. I am so happy that you have chosen to spend your lunch hour with us talking about work hour reductions. Uh, my name is Anna Truberg, and I'm the elected president of the Swedish Union DEEK, and we organize people that work uh, within culture, communication, and in the creative sector. Uh, and work time reduction is something that we have been talking a lot about. And I'm very happy to say that a lot of other people and organizations are talking about it as well. So it really feels that there's something happening uh, both here in Sweden and internationally. Uh, and just a few years ago, a major work time reduction was implemented in Iceland uh, and in Sweden. There is a large research study that is um, uh, being launched this fall. And today we are going to talk to two people that are going to tell us a little bit more about this. And I will try to also tell you a little bit about Deke's stand in this issue. Uh, but I will begin with introducing our guests. Uh, since 2021, all public sector employees in Iceland work between 32 and 36 hours per week. And today we have Dagny Aradotter Pind, who is a legal advisor at Iceland's largest federation for public employees with us. And you are going to tell us a little bit about your experiences in Iceland. So hello, Dagny. Hi. Thank you for inviting me to this webinar. Yeah, we're so happy to have you here. Uh, and from a Swedish perspective, we have Anna-Karin Alderlin from Four Day Workweek Sweden, who has in initiated a large Swedish research study on work time reduction. Um, and you are going to tell us a little bit more about this interesting development here on our home turf, so to speak. So very, very welcome, Anna-Karin. Thank you very much. Uh, but I thought I will... Begin. Oh, sorry. I'm now. I'm going to make Angus happy and say that if any of you who are listening uh, have any questions, you just type them in the chat, and Angus will pick pick them up, and we will go back to them at the end of this this hour. So do not hesitate to ask if you have any questions to any one of us. Uh, but I thought we should uh, begin in Iceland. So Dagny, I would like would like you to describe a little bit what. Um, how it looks in Iceland now, and who who is part of this work hour reduction? How is it working? What are the effects? What can you tell us? Yeah, okay. So it's a bit of a story. Um, I'll I'll try to summarize it really quickly, and then and then go uh, to the situation as as it is now. Ooh. So we did pilot projects between. Uh, 2014 and 2019, which was uh, yeah, really a really Im important step. Uh, then we negotiated uh, for a shorter work week for all public sector employees uh, in uh, 2020. Uh, and then we had an implementation phase until 2021. Um, this was sort of... Uh, uh, an agreement that was made beside the main collective agreement. Mm. Uh, so uh, there was a little bit of variation in how it was implemented in, in different workplaces. Uh, but it was always our goal to sort of uh, integrate it into the collective agreements and then sort of make it permanent for all public sector employees. 
And we just finished the uh, negotiation round uh, this spring. And uh, yeah, we got there. So now uh, in all uh, collective agreements in the public sector in Iceland, uh, the work week is stated to be 36 hours. Uh, and that, uh, yeah, that goes for every employee. But then we have special provisions on, on shift workers. Uh, and if you are working a lot during the night, or even not a lot, uh, if you're working like a moderate amount during the night uh, or in the weekends, uh, your working hours drop even more and, and the floor is uh, 32 hours. So yeah, we are quite happy uh, about uh, this stuff. Uh, yeah, and this is actually, yeah, uh, will come into effect on November 1st. But mm -hmm. uh, in general, it doesn't really mean uh, that much of a change because we already had uh, the agreement since 2020. But certain mm -hmm. workplaces uh, will have to sort of uh, take one step further uh, to get mm -hmm. down to 236. Mm -hmm. uh, can I ask you if we if we begin uh, a little bit further back, how how did did this all come about? Where did the idea come from, and how did you work to? To get to the point where where you are now, because in in Sweden, for instance, I mean we have this big debate about work hour re reductions now, but um, we are not there yet. So so how did it come about in in Iceland? Um, yeah, I mean the demand really comes from our members, and if I can mm -hmm. mention maybe the shift workers. Uh, we even have some documents from the 90s where, where shift workers are demanding that uh, their working hours be shorter than the, the daytime workers. Mm. And that's just due to how, uh, how bad shift work can, can be for your health and, and for your work-life balance. Mm. Uh, yeah, but uh, like the real work started in maybe around 2010, uh, then we started campaigning a lot and sort of uh, getting the attention of the public uh, and of course the yeah our our partners our negotiation negotiation partners are are the state and and then all the municipalities. So we we started uh, pressing them and uh, Reykjavik city was uh, interested mm. uh, and there was actually a a politician uh, on the city council who was also pushing for it. So, mm -hmm. so, so we started uh, the pilot project with them, and then we were able to push for the government to promise to uh, also do a pilot project, and that was uh, mm -hmm. in connection with collective agreements uh, in 2015. Uh, yeah, so that's sort of the, the story. And, and then we were able to build on the results of the pilot projects, uh, which were mainly positive. Mm. Uh, and, and yeah, so it's it's been like one step at a time. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope this answers the question. Oh, yes, absolutely. When, when, do you, when you say it's um, mainly positive, what, what were the positive effects that you could see when you did these, these trials or pilot projects? Mm. Mm -hmm. So we monitored it both by surveys uh, with employers and employees, and then, then there was also sort of some more in-depth uh, research with interviews uh, with both uh, managers and, and, and employees. Uh, and in general, people were happy about it, and, and they uh, sort of uh, expressed that they had more work-life balance. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and some stories, like I remember, because of course, not all employees were supporting this. Uh, mm -hmm. We have some uh, some groups that have maybe been on the same shift schedule for, for 20, 30 years, uh, mm -hmm. working 12-hour shifts, and, and it's always the same. Uh, but the <clears throat> one... Uh, uh, police precinct was, was uh, part of the pilot, uh, and... Uh, yeah, the, they were sort of uh, middle-aged or, or older uh, older men, and they were quite skeptical. And uh, and and then one one guy was so happy about it. He was like, "Oh, I can join the the running group and 
and <laughs> I have so much more time to to spend with my wife and and it's just really like uh, completely changed my life mm. uh, but then like for for younger people they were more happy about uh, sort of uh, uh, how how it made it easier for them to pick up their their kids uh, from mm-hmm. kindergarten and and also just do all the all the household work that you need to do uh, mm-hmm. yeah and managers uh, they did not really see a drop in productivity or or things like that which is of course mm-hmm. kind of hard to measure in the public sector. Mm. Uh, it's different than when you are a company and you're pro- uh, producing something and, and you can just look at your profits. Uh, mm. But yeah, uh, and they also saw this effect of sort of a better workplace culture and that it sort of uh, pushed the, the workplace together, both uh, the managers and the employees to, to sort of try to reach this goal and, mm. and it cr- created better collaboration and, and sort of a better atmosphere. Mm. But so the the change when you uh, actually move forward to like oh now we're going to drop uh, drop the work hours per per week, um, how was the employees in included in this work? I mean every every workplace and every sector um, surely must must uh, you know go through this change in in their own way, and I, mm-hmm. I think it's also very important for the employees to have agency in this work. Mm-hmm. Can you can you describe that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, that uh, I I completely agree. And of course, we are a trade union or or federation of, of trade unions. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that is like always our our stance that that employees uh, and trade unions even should be involved in in yeah uh, things like this. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so so for the daytime workers. Um, it was supposed to be implemented in each workplace. Uh, so you, yeah, and, and we went, made like extensive uh, material on, on how you could sort of go over your work processes and, and, uh, and yeah, they were supposed to have meetings and include all the stuff and then make sort of a smaller group, which was supposed to come up with uh, ideas on how the working hours should be. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe in one workplace, uh, it's possible to uh, just close it after uh, lunch on Fridays, but in other places, you you need to do it in a different way. Mm-hmm. And maybe also employees had different opinions on on sort of whether they wanted to do it or like work shorter hours every day uh, or uh, yeah, some something other. And and then mm. some workplaces are more complicated, maybe uh, such as uh, kindergartens, where they need to stay open. Mm. Uh, yeah, but th- that's the daytime workers. For the shift workers, uh, it was a bit more strict uh, and a bit more complicated, of course, because if you mm. have a hospital or, or the fire department or something, uh, you still need to... Yeah, I mean, it's it's still 24 hours uh, around the clock that people need to be there. So uh, the the public employers actually were, were uh, yeah, they, they agreed on providing these places with more money to in order mm. to hire more staff. But mm. then there were a lot of, of, of sort of, uh, of course, uh, they had to go go through some changes in their workplaces and maybe change uh, shift schedules like I mentioned they had maybe been the same for for decades and maybe we're not reflecting how uh, like you, I can take the airport for example uh, the, the, the international airport uh, they always had the same number of people uh, in the customs uh, the, yeah the, the people who work in customs but uh, but the flights only or mainly come in like uh, in the morning and then in the afternoon and then at night. So there are like these gaps uh, between when you maybe need fewer people. So things like that. And mm. the employees were also supposed to be involved in this. Mm. Well, it's very interesting to see how 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 you can solve it in different areas. 
Yeah, um, and it was complicated, believe me. <laughs> yeah, also, imagine. this was going on uh, during COVID, which which might oh, yeah. have been a, a good place, a good yeah. a good thing, because uh, we were able to like do so much uh, through Teams and and sort of uh, online. Uh, yeah, instead of yeah running all around the country and, and trying to mm. help everybody like that. So I don't know whether it was a good thing or a bad thing, but I I think in the end it it helped. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe also, I mean, the the pandemic was horrible in so many ways, but it also showed us that it is possible to change how we do things, and it yeah. is possible to do it quite quickly if you have mm-hmm. to. So maybe that could have um, helped in a positive way, and also in this change. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. But mm-hmm. then again, it was maybe because, uh, like the healthcare uh, places, they were of course flooded with uh, just. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was mm. it was difficult for them to sort of be doing this at the same time that they were dealing with uh, the consequences of, of the pandemic. Mm. Uh, you mentioned productivity, and that is something that we come up against all the time in Sweden when, when we talk about the fact that we see a need for a work hour reduction. And then the opposing side, the employers and the employers organization usually say that, oh, but then, then the productivity will drop and the economy of the country will drop and... Um, it will be chaos ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, but from uh, tests that have been done around the world, we we don't really see that. And and as I understand you, you you haven't really been able to see that in Iceland either. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, we're really used to like this discourse. And even when we were pushing for this, the biggest uh, federation of of employers in the private sector, they actually called it uh, economic terrorism so oh, there, wow. were, yeah, there, so there was big, that's big words <laughs> yeah that's a really big word uh, yeah but like you said uh, results all over the world uh, have been mainly positive uh, and it sort of uh, just means that you have to focus a bit more while you are at work uh, mm. but also I mean I'm sure we or like we can look back to when the eight-hour workday started and mm-hmm. when people stopped uh, working on Saturdays or even Sundays, and it's always mm-hmm. the same. Uh, yeah, they, they all say the same thing. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, but then also just think about all the technological advantages, as you, as you mentioned earlier, that it mm-hmm. is like there are so many opportunities to do things in a different way. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and I actually was just uh, before this, I, I, there was a, a, a colleague of mine sort of introducing to us how we can use uh, AI uh, mm. not to replace us, but to help us. Um, mm. Of course, I mean, that's a, a whole other discussion. Uh, yeah, but just think uh, when people were writing down everything with a pen and having papers all around and and, and I mean, you can do so much more. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. I, I, I think this is, uh, I mean, it's not, we have not seen these results and, and around the world, uh, it's the same. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, that's it. Thank you very much. I, I, we will get back to you, of course, but I think this is a perfect uh, opportunity to bring in Anna Karin from 4-Day Workweek. Uh, you recognize the results that we are talking about. Uh, I will let you talk a little bit. Tell us about the organization and the work that you do. Yes. Hi, everyone. And very interesting to hear from Iceland. I've been reading a lot about So it's um, um, interesting to hear all the things that goes on in the world around this subject. And that's also uh, a part of my role because I'm the national partner of a global NGO that's called Four Day Week Global. Uh, but they operate in uh, various uh, countries and Sweden is one of them as uh, me and my partner started up uh, this work in Sweden. Uh, we are the 26th country in the world that are represented now. And um, the idea about four day week is to uh, learn from each other and collect uh, everything that happens in uh, organizations that try and learn from uh, reducing work time uh, and it's done by a model called 180-100. So the uh, 80 in the between the hundreds are uh, the uh, working time. 
However, it's not only working reduction, it's also um, a cause to, or I mean, to stay in value creation or productivity or result or however you mention it. So that's the first 100. So 100% value creation of 80% of the time, and uh, then also staying with 100% of the salary, which is the last 100. Mm. So uh, global organization collecting uh, business cases, but also connecting with uh, research. That's mm. a, a major thing. Um, and uh, uh, worldwide, it's uh, Boston College who is leading the Meta study, the global one. Mm. And there are then representatives from different um, universities in different uh, countries. And here in Sweden, we are collaborating with uh, a business school in Stockholm, Handexo School in Stockholm, and Karlstad mm. University uh, with a research team that are belonging to both. So, and yeah. and you're and you're just yeah. starting yeah. yeah and you're just starting up a research project in Sweden. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, we're starting now in November uh, with the first batch of a company who has uh, signed up. We are uh, nine companies uh, now, but we will also open uh, or have the research open uh, a bit into 2025 at least to uh, oh. and more companies joining us and. Uh, yeah, we are together um, uh, making sure that they have the tools that they need, uh, have answered the questions that need to be answered. As you heard also from Iceland, it's a lot of pre-work to be done. Um, mm -hmm. Scheduling, how do we communicate around this? What's our like rules within this uh, framework? Um, mm -hmm. It's also uh, what we just heard is not one size fits everyone. It's actually the opposite, it's one size fits none. Uh, yes. However, the solutions uh, and ideas behind are quite similar, so uh, mm. we can uh, adapt and uh, copy paste from from each other. Mm. Yeah, is is there a certain? I don't know how far you've gotten yet, but I remember when I read the study that came from Cambridge uh, a year or two ago. Um, all of the different organizations had had worked with reducing their work hours in in different ways, of course, because you know different needs, different organizations. Uh, but there were some things that were fairly similar. For instance, basically everybody had looked at how do we have meetings? Do the meetings have to be so long? Does everybody have to be in the meetings? You know, all of those things that we, I think, all of us are thinking about sometimes when we sit in meetings and wonder why am I here? Yeah. Uh, can can you see? Uh, similar things in 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 the, the organizations that you're working with in Sweden now. Yes, definitely. Uh, lo looking out then on a global scale, we have uh, 26 countries that are on the study now, and we have seven that has uh, released uh, their report, so to say. They have tried this for at least six months, many of them even longer. Uh, so they have like research uh, reports that's possible to download on the four day week global uh, homepage. And just three days ago, uh, Germany uh, released their uh, report from 50 mm -hmm. countries, um, companies that were part of that. So even if it's very spread over the world, it's like New Zealand and Australia, it's uh, South Africa, it's Brazil, it's Germany, it's uh, UK, as you said, Anna. Uh, mm -hmm. So very spread in different locations. The uh, results are extremely similar. Um, mm. And what you see is that it's uh, actually hiring the, or uh, increasing the uh, result in the companies and also the productivity. Mm. You see that people are feeling much more uh, healthy. Well-being uh, is a major leap upwards. Uh, stress reduction, uh, less burnouts and sick leaves. Uh, cooperation, as we also heard from you in Iceland, is also one that is actually was not part of the study from the beginning, but was added on as you saw such a major difference in how people collaborated within the companies. Mm. Uh, and so result very similar. And as you said, Anna, with meetings, of course, that's something that we see uh, in every country that are having meetings. Of course, that's mm. also different from what kind of sector and branch you are uh, that you are in. But the uh, for us people working more in offices, meetings, focus time, and decision mm. uh, policies uh, are the um, three major ones that keep coming up. Also in Sweden, what we're talking about uh, with the um, mm. companies that we are joining. Can you tell us a little bit about 
what kind of organizations you're working with now. I don't know if you you can name any companies, but or organizations. But can you say what kind of companies or organizations that are in this study? Yeah, we have three representations or from sectors. We have uh, three NGOs. We have uh, uh, small mid sized companies working like in. Uh, uh, digital marketing, uh, communication, uh, meetings, mm. actually also setting up events. Mm. Uh, and we have a, a, a Göteborg stad as well with us, with the uh, mm. different um, parts of the of the city, mm. where the uh, social care and um, yeah other sectors within uh, the city of Gothenburg. Mm. Uh, we will have a press release exactly which company these are in uh, in a month from now. Oh. Uh, Three. Exciting! Yeah, it's very interesting to see. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully we have even more than nine then, because we are in constant uh, discussions with companies. It's a mm. big interest, but also a bit uh, resistance in in Sweden right now. Is my is my feeling. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I was talking to Dagny before how they worked uh, before uh, they got to where they are in Iceland now, and I think that is where we are in in Sweden now. Um, what could you say about the debate that's going on? Because I, I feel very much that uh, there is so much studies and science that is actually, or like good research that is done on this, that point very much in favor of a work hour reduction. But at the same time, there's a very uh, hard resistance uh, from uh, maybe especially the employer organizations that say that, no, 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 this 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 won't work and there's also a discussion about whether this should be dealt with in collective agreements or if it should be dealt with in law um what is your take on all of this yeah it's uh just since a year ago when i started with this there's a lot of things happening it's a mm -hmm. hot topic so to say mm -hmm. uh, and i would say that people in general looking at us as human beings are quite positive uh, mm. around However, as you say, Anna, the labor um, unions are uh, more positive, many of them, as you, uh, mm. and I think there are five uh, official ones in, in Sweden working in favor for uh, lower work weeks or time reductions. Uh, employee organizations are generally very um, um, not in favor of this, which is a little bit strange, I think, as we see from the global result that they will not harm the business. Actually, the opposite is will actually give in favor. However, mm -hmm. there is not um, there is a lot of tests, but I think the tests need to be done in Sweden before mm -hmm. people actually dare to lean into this thing. And there, where mm -hmm. we see that this study is um, a very good timing of it's coming out now, so mm -hmm. that we can actually test, try, be experimental, and see. Could we in Sweden be as uh, or create as good results that we see in other other countries? We don't know that yet. We can think mm. that yes, why should Sweden differ? But we don't know. So mm. I think that's um, something that very many people uh, and organizations are uh, now curious to see. Mm. What's missing from the uh, employee organization is them actually inviting companies to to be part of this to to get a broader uh, picture of uh, mm. okay, now we're doing this study. Why not mm. get broader? Mm. I think from from Deke's point of view, we've we've been working with this uh, as a suggestion from our members in the Congress, um, and uh, we also. Uh, asked uh, a few months ago in a report that we did uh, not only our members but in amongst everyone in Sweden um, what they thought about uh, reducing work hours and there was a lot of people that were very positive. Uh, one number there that stuck out a lot was that uh, about half, a little bit more with the women, especially women in childbearing age uh, and maybe a little bit less with the men, but about half said that if I'm supposed to work the way I work now, as many hours as I work today, I will not be able to work uh, until my official retirement age. Mm. And I think that's quite mm. significant and that's very serious because we can't have half of the population saying that I will not make it or work until my retirement age. There is a cost involved with that as well, both as on a, on a personal level, but also, of course, in a more macroeconomic national level. Absolutely. And I was uh, very struck when I saw that number as well in, in, in your mm -hmm. your report. And I think that goes for also uh, 
what we see in society today with the increased um, uh, mental health that is going in the complete wrong direction, uh, about the engagement going in the wrong direction. We're talking about quiet quitting. People don't want to lean in anymore. They are tired. Mm. Uh, and when we're not talking about productivity and, and value, of course, we will not get everything like optimal performance from these people. So mm. that's also one of the um, part of increasing results when we're looking in the in our, on a global uh, study that when we get more rest, when we get more flexibility in our work week, we will also lean in in another way. We will mm. uh, take away the stress or reduce the stress, not take away, that will still be that, but reduce, mm. which of course also brings us um, a more sustainable work life so mm. that we can work longer and so that we can work here and now actually optimal, which is not the case anymore. So I think mm. when we're saying this will cost too much, we are not looking into the right figures uh, no. and we are only talking about what will it be if we take away our, but not what, what will it take or what would we be able to do in these hours uh, mm. or mm. engaged mode uh, and what cost will it reduce both mm. say long-term, uh, but also here and now term. Mm. Um, the survey that we did also showed that um, I was thinking about what you said, Dagny, that it was like older people maybe had a little bit of a harder time with this thinking about this change. Uh, our survey also showed that younger people was uh, more in favor of working less. And I'm thinking maybe if you grow up, you see your parents work really, really hard trying to get the work life balance right. Uh, and you think that, yeah, well, I like my job, but I want to live as well. And maybe they want a different kind of more balanced life for themselves? Is that something that you, you see also in, in the studies that you have, um, have read? I don't see it in the study, but I see it when uh, reading other reports and uh, mm. talking to people in an organization that there is a shift in, uh, in how we think in different generations. Mm. Uh, not only in the younger generation, also in the millennials and, and my generation, we mm. have been working very, very much. Uh, mm. And that has been the norm. It's been... Uh, Cool being busy, so to say, and no. <laughs> now to have a, a life outside uh, work, which I think is very positive from a societal. Mm. Uh, mm. And that doesn't mean that I will not do my work. It means probably that I can do my work even better, but also, um, yeah, enjoy life and also be part of life in another way and stepping in into societal issues, environmental issues when mm. we are not. We are not uh, having the headspace to be there mm. right now because we mm. are busy being busy. So what would that look like if we reduce stress mm. level, connect mm. more human to mm. human and human to nature? Mm. I'm thinking that's very interesting. We, we could also see in our survey that um, regardless what party you said that you voted for in Sweden, uh, there was still a very high amount uh, a high number of people in favor of work hour reductions of course some parties was a little bit less in inclined or people that voted for some parties were a little bit less inclined and some a little bit more but in general it was from i think it was like around 45 percent and upwards um and that also tells me that this is not a a question of ideology it's a regardless of what political ideology we we happen to have uh, we all struggle to get our life together and have the time to both work and live and take care of kids or older parents or whatever it can be. Um, so I, I thought that was very interesting as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, the, 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 Dagny, when it comes to you were in uh, COVID, talk about the big yeah. change and doing yeah. this anyhow. Because when I'm talking to companies, they say we are too... There are too many other changes going on. We can't do another change. Uh, mm. But you've actually managed uh, in a change to do a, a change, so to say. So maybe that's actually a good, a good learning as well. So maybe we should do it now. In a regret, we are in a economic um, down period. Maybe we should start talking about these things. How can we actually build a structure and working models that could be sustainable when the mm. upturn comes again? Absolutely. I was thinking, Dagny, when you, you um, hear what me and Anna Karin are saying here, what what do you think that we can learn from the 
process that you had in uh, Iceland? What 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 good advice do you have for us here? Hmm. Yeah, really interesting uh, to hear from uh, Anna Karin, and uh, yeah, I, I I don't remember whether I knew about this uh, pilot project in in, in Sweden, but uh, I've noted it down and I will follow it. Uh, but and I, yeah, I think it's a good point uh, she made about maybe right now we can focus on this because that's the situation. Um, also, just talking about how tired people are. I mean, people are tired after all of this, uh, and uh, yeah, and and uh, and also the generational aspect. I mean, yeah, I think just. I mean, I feel like it's been like so much uh, like around the world talking about how, how younger generations are different. Uh, mm. I mean, I don't even know if that's true, but still, I mean, there's some sort of a, a shift in, in views on, on what, your, what your life should look like. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I know I'm not answering your question, but I, I, I just, I want to also men mention the, the gender perspective uh, in this. Mm -hmm. uh, that we we see or, or part of the program with the, with the shift workers was that uh, we, uh, or people who were working part time, they were able to work the same hours, uh, and then of course they got higher pay because they maybe went from uh, eighty percent to ninety percent, uh, mm -hmm. and we also saw it from from uh, the uh, pilots that that men were saying, oh, I'm more able to take care of my 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 kids now uh, mm -hmm. so it, it's also a sort of uh, an opportunity to sort of balance out uh, the household work and, and all the unpaid labor that we know that uh, women are uh, uh, more involved in than, than men and mm -hmm. and I actually I was in uh, Stockholm uh, a couple of weeks ago and I heard the presentation from uh, the engineering union mm -hmm. Uh, and they were talking about not shorter hours, but flexibility. And they mm -hmm. have seen that uh, that women are more able to work uh, full time. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but my good. advice probably would be th that you should take it one step at a time. It's really hard mm -hmm. to sort of uh, just, uh, and that's also maybe what, what you were referring to earlier, Anna, whether you should do it through law or through collective agreements. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's probably better to start small and then sort of uh, get the ball rolling. And you can do mm -hmm. that with with pilots or you can do it by sort of taking steps uh, with the working time and then going further down. Um, yeah, because you also have to convince uh, both the employers and the whole of society that, that this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that would probably be my advice. And also always be focused on involving uh, all people at the workplace. It's, it should not be top mm -hmm. down. It should be done in, in collaboration. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's very interesting what you, I think it's very good advice. And I think it's interesting what you say about um, collective agreements in relation to law. Um, Deke's vision is that we should uh, ultimately make this change in law, but I also know that through uh, when we have done work hour reductions before, it has uh, usually been you, you get collective agreements that reduce the work hours and then the law comes afterwards and kind of sets the norm thing. And I think it's important to, I think it will be like this now too, but I think it's important to get to that last step because that is how we reach uh, everybody Mm -hmm. um, and not only yeah, yeah. certain, certain yeah. occupations, so it's yeah. an equality thing. But, agree. but, yeah. but, I, but I do think I, I think you're absolutely right that it needs to uh, or has to happen in steps. Mm -hmm. I think that yeah. is um, uh, the way it will have to go. Yeah, and actually now that we have reached these goals through collective agreements, now our demand is uh, that legislation be changed, uh, mm -hmm. and then we see maybe in the near future or, or in some years time that the, we can then start taking uh, other steps mm -hmm. uh, because, and, and yeah, of course I'm representing the, the public sector uh, workers. Uh, the private sector workers are still not in as good position. And of course that's uh, 
that worries me. I mean, I, I, I want to think about uh, just the population in general. So, yeah, mm. I think uh, ultimately we will need to change the law. Mm. Well, I was also thinking about the, the gender aspect. Uh, when The last time we did anything about the norm working hours in Sweden was in 1973. Um, and that was a very different country from what it is now. Then it was very common to uh, for the woman to uh, be at home um, and the man was working. Um, not for everyone, of course, but that was still the norm back then. Uh, then uh, women are working and having careers of their own, which is very, very good. We have, that is a very good development, of course. Uh, but it doesn't mean that all the work at home disappears. And we also know that, that a lot of that work, uh, a majority of that work still uh, is put on the shoulders of women. So you, you then have women that work full time uh, in the workplace and then they go home and work even more. So this, um, if we can reduce work hours, we can also hopefully level the playing field a little bit. Um, I was thinking, Karin, when you look at uh, work hour reduction abroad, is it what, what would be your your um, uh, is it mostly done through collective agreements, or is it done by law, or is it a combination like me and Dagny are talking about? You ask me. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm not hundred percent sure actually, because mm. I'm more focusing on the, on the study and research as such. Uh, mm. But I know there is very many different solutions, and also there it is one size fits none. Uh, it's very, mm. very different. But mm. I know that uh, there has been uh, uh, more and more bigger companies stepping in. There's been more and more political uh, uh, discussions uh, around this. So I, I would say that that the the research uh, again is a very good uh, uh, baseline or uh, product. Mm used to show it, it actually works or it is, doesn't work in this way so it's mm -hmm. a um, if we don't start trying we would never know right no so, exactly uh, and i think the the biggest obstacle in this is that we are so stuck in our beliefs that uh, productivity is equal hours uh, mm. and this actually shows that uh, we can be smarter uh, ai absolutely but also like how we work in meetings and mm -hmm. If well-being can increase, we also can do a better work. So, mm. uh, getting that into uh, everyone's head <laughs> will make it yeah. easier. Uh, and proof mm. is proof. Um, so, I exactly. I I feel that very very much that it that um, old habits uh, die hard. Uh, yeah. And sometimes it's just that it seems like this forty hours. It's like, but it's always been like that. So it has to be like that. But yeah. the fact is, it hasn't always been like that, and we can do something different. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking, I've, I've seen that there are uh, has dropped in a few questions. Agnes, do you want to uh, tell us some questions and we can see what Anna Karin and Dagny says about this? Absolutely. Uh, I think we can start a little bit about Iceland and how it is there just to make sure that everyone understands and there's been a few questions about is the 26 hour working week only in the public sector or is it for all parts of the labor market in Iceland and also how was it before the shift uh yeah so so before the shift it was uh, 40 hours and that our legislation still says 40 hours and it's actually I think it's also from 1973, maybe 71, but at least the 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> regarding the private sector, uh, they did negotiate sort of for an opening uh, that it's possible to, uh, at the company level, to reduce the work hours. Uh, but the problem is I, I don't really know how many have done that and I haven't really seen any studies, but we do see some, like if we look at just the, the numbers, like you can see probably on, on Eurostat or, or something like that, like how have the working hours developed in Iceland? We see a drop now. I mean, part of it is the public sector agreements, of course, since we are 
are uh, 30% of the labor market uh, or something like that. But uh, I, I think maybe the, in the private sector, there's some movement, but, but not big enough. Uh, it's most common that people work 40 hours there. Mm -hmm. Do you see, while Agnes is looking for another question, um, can you see that this will be a way of um, uh, making more people want to work in the public sector? Um, if you choose to work in the public sector, you work less hours than if you would go and work for a private company? Uh, yeah, I mean, it might mean that. And of course, part of it is also that we have staffing problems uh, in uh, certain areas of the of the public sector. So that was also an incentive for the public uh, employers to sort of uh, hop on board with us uh, and negotiate uh, for, for these agreements. Um, I mean, we don't really know because it's, we don't have any long term experience, but I mean, I can just say from people around me and 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 uh, and the, uh, yeah some friends and 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 uh, acquaintances and and I hear this a lot uh and yeah I mean I am uh, uh, a millennial I guess so it's maybe people uh, around that age if they have tried working 36 hours uh, they mm -hmm. don't want to go back they just say, oh, I, I could never apply for a job where I have to work 40 hours. I mean, I just can't imagine. And it's only four hours. So it's a really small change. But still, people feel like uh, it has a big impact on, on their life. Mm. Thank you. Agnes? Yeah, I think this uh, actually goes into the same kind of question because, uh, well, it's the discussion about environmental impact and the future uh, that and uh, the fact that no person can produce more and more have since in this industrialism been connected to that we use more energy and uh, other energy than our own muscles and now we know that ai needs massive amount of electricity and so on so how does this uh, impact environmental issues I think you can. I can open up the question for all of you. Ooh. Yeah. Should Should I start or? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. We. I mean, when we started campaigning for this and and even negotiating about this, we were not thinking about the environment at all. Uh, but then, like more and more uh, studies from uh, around the world uh, were coming out during the same time, and and there we could see sort of the environmental uh, uh, sort of focus. Um, so I don't know. I I don't really know anything else than than I've read from there. I mean, it it sort of can have an impact on uh, commute uh, people. Uh, need to commute less. They can also maybe prepare more food at home rather than uh, takeout and and things like that. Uh, but I would not say that I'm an an expert on 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 this uh, aspect uh, of the shorter work hours. Mm -hmm. Anna Karin, do you have uh, yeah. anything it, up from the studies? Uh, measured in the global study or in the studies, they will actually add more questions around this to get a. Uh, deep dive into this it's quite uh, narrow right now we do see that people mm -hmm. commute with us um, and um, we see that they do more healthy habits and more environmental uh, better uh, habits exactly what that is i don't know but um, there are um, a positive development in this um, i go back to what i said before i think the best thing is here or the, the most uh, effectful way is that if we reduce stress we will also uh, care more and, and open up for uh, new thoughts how we can behave and do different for the environment but it's not in the study thank you uh, one last question from the chat is uh, actually for us at Dyk mm -hmm. uh, you have now had a big chance for you in DIC and uh, implemented uh, to work less hours. How is the difference yes. showed for you? Oh, yes, that's true. Uh, we uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, DIC's office, uh, we signed a new collective agreement. We work uh, 35 hours a week uh, and 
I well, we are still around. We're doing well. We have not collapsed. It's not chaos anywhere. Um, so I think it works very well, and this will of course be evaluated as we go along. And and um, to tell you the truth, I should probably not be the one talking about that. Maybe you can say something, Agnes. You are working thirty five hours. How how? What is your experience of changing from uh, a more normal norm work week to thirty five hours? Yeah, uh, I think it's actually been a very like interesting experience because we we first been working with this question in a political sense, and now we implemented it in our own lives. So it's mm -hmm. really interesting and good to see that we can have uh, things like uh, we do not plan in meetings on Friday afternoons for the entire office and those kind of things. So it's very hands on how to actually work with these questions. And I think as a trade union, it's really good to see these things uh, firsthand. So mm. I think it's uh, going well and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more like how the reports are going after we evaluate as well. I, I also think it's very important to um, practice what you preach. Uh, I think as a union, if we walk around telling everybody that uh, we think there should be a work hour reduction, we also need to be able to show that we really, really mean what we are saying and, and to move ahead and be a good example. Um, and uh, I think when I meet people from other organizations, other unions, there's a lot of interest. You're, you, they are very curious they want to know like how is this working and what do you do with this and how does it work uh, so people really want to know and they are curious and I and I would say also a little bit envious <laughs> they go like oh wow it should work work at your place um, but so far I think it's a it's a great success and we're very happy about that and I really hope that our example will uh, you know uh, encourage others to try try it themselves um, because you can also see uh, in a lot of the studies that are made around the world that uh, you have a test period of maybe six months or, or a year or something like that. But a lot of organizations continue to have uh, work hour reduction because it works so very well. Um, uh, I think you can say a little bit more about that, Anna Karin, maybe. Yes, I just wanted to send a link to the Swedish study if people are interested to oh, read more perfect. and to sign up as well. It will come. Um, yeah, but I also think that it's um, uh, it's interesting that you are part of this and driving it. I think it's a very good role model of this. Um, what was the question, Anna? Um, I was going see if I remember my question. Oh, yes. Uh, in a lot of the international studies, a lot of the organizations that have tried reduced work hours for like six months or a year, uh, they choose to continue working like exactly. that after, after yeah. the study ends. Yeah, we see actually 93% uh, of the companies that are part, and it's hundreds of companies right now in different sectors, different sizes, are mm. continuing on, on the path that they have uh, started. Not ready, but con uh, they will probably never be ready. We are never ready, but they continue mm. on the journey to test and try and this experimental pilot study. So 93%. So it's uh, showing that something is working, right? Oh, it's very interesting. Uh, Dagny, is there, um, maybe we talked a little bit about that before, but is there examples of organizations uh, in Iceland that are not in the public sector that are trying now because they see how it's working in the public sector? Um, do you know any, any uh, tests or pilots like that? <clears throat> yeah. I haven't heard about anything of the big companies, at least. Um, no, not really. Well, I mean, maybe in the industry, there was already before, like heavy industry, there was already before sort of different working hours there. But that has been that way for, for a long, long time. And that was actually part of what we could point towards, like uh, this possible, this is the way it's done there. Uh, but like since 2019, 2020, I just, I don't really know. And I, I, I mean, I follow this issue really closely and I've been asking around. And so I think actually that's not really the case. And, and mm. maybe that's because of the pushback of the, of the uh, employers uh, organization. But mm. I really do hope uh, that that will change. 
And some of the trade unions have been uh, calling for this and uh, putting it in their demands for w during collective agreements. But I don't really think they have been pushing hard. Uh, mm. I think they have then sort of shifted their focus uh, to other things. Mm. It would be interesting to follow and see if something is happening uh, in the mm -hmm. months ahead. I have um, one more question that was sent okay. to, to us. Okay. And it's uh, how do you view the Swedish context today compared to previous times when the same issue was on the agenda? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe I should take it. Yeah. I see that there is a more openness to think new uh, in Sweden, I think uh, absolutely the pandemic uh, as part of it, we have started to twist it and try different kind of solutions mm. already. We now talk a lot about uh, about where to work in Sweden mm. still, home uh, office and how do we get people to the office or how can we work at home? And that is also a competitive um, uh, part in, in, the, in the how to be uh, branding, employee branding perspective. And I think that will now start stepping into the uh, how to elaborate about time and uh, uh, when to work and how to work um, and how much to work. So that I see, uh, actually, we do have uh, some companies in Sweden already trying this uh, healthcare, quite many like hospitals, uh, mm -hmm. quite advanced in, in this kind of uh, questions, but also private sectors uh, and one of the biggest um, reason why they do this is to be uh, uh, or building their um, employee employer branding perspective and get people to uh, attract and retain people within their companies mm -hmm. so that does see a big difference that is more um, openness to test and try and uh, mm -hmm. evaluate things um, but I also see that um, it's maybe polarized more the question. I think you will know that better, Anna, from a, that has or mm. I've been following it longer. I see mm. a quite big polarization in the questions uh, where you need mm. to be pro or against it. I absolutely, I agree with you. I I um I think I see two things. I see just like you that there there is a just a two last years there has been a much greater curiosity. Um, I think more people and employers as well are curious to see like, oh, this could be something, but how would it work and how would we do it at our workplace and, and stuff like that. So that's very good because curiosity is a great starting point because you can work from there and find find ways that work for you. Um, and then, of course, I also see this po polarization and I see that uh, those that are very much against uh, work hour reduction um, are mainly the employer organization, some employers, and their argumentation is exactly the same as it has been the four or five times when we have reduced work hours during the last century. Um, and they've been wrong every time. And, and, and I truly believe that they are wrong this time as well, because all the studies and all the pilots and research are on the side of a future with work hour reduction. Mm. Uh, so I, I think uh, we have a battle now and we will fight that out. But I, I, I think um, uh, that in the future, and I think it's not that far off, uh, mm. we will move forward with this and have uh, hopefully a law in the end that reduces work hours. But uh, if not that, we will have many more co collective agreements that include work hour reductions as a step towards a law. Uh, so I'm I'm um, I'm being very I'm, I'm very optimistic when it comes to this issue. But of course, we have to do the, the, the work just like you have done in Iceland and that you were doing now, Karin, and that we are doing at Beek and also other unions, of course. Uh, an hour goes by very quickly when you have interesting people to discuss interesting things with. So I would like to thank Dagny and I would like to thank Anna Karin for being here and uh, educating us about this and in inspiring us. Uh, I would also like to thank everybody who has been following along and for asking uh, interesting and smart questions. Uh, and as I said, I think we are going to uh, move ahead into a future with shorter work hours and Deke is surely going to work for that. So thank you very much, everybody, and uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks.